Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and after over 4,000 miles in my Toyota Land Cruiser, it's time for some real talk. The honeymoon phase is definitely over, and I've got some honest feedback about this rig, but I've also got some killer upgrades that are turning this vehicle into the ultimate solo adventure vehicle that we're gonna take a look at today. So, let's break it all down and show you what I've been up to. All right, let's kick this off with a few of my critiques on the Land Cruiser, and then we'll end on a good note talking about all the stuff that I've done and a few things I've got coming. One of them that's bugging me is this spare tire in the back. This thing hangs down really low. Now, I did install wider tires on the Land Cruiser, but these aren't the widest tires that I plan on getting. And the challenge is, this really just ruins your departure angle. And I think the reason that they did this is because the hybrid battery is here in the back. Maybe they weren't able to recess the spare tire mount up high enough. Even the stock spare tire that was a little bit thinner, not much thinner, stood down quite a bit. So the challenge is when I go with a little bit larger tire, that's probably not gonna work. And I'm gonna need to come up with some kind of bumper with a tire carrier on here. Not really what I was hoping to do, but I think that's just gonna have to be how it's gonna be. Now I've owned many Jeeps over the years and one thing you can count on is you're probably gonna replace a windshield from time to time because the Jeep windshields are so flat and they stand up so straight. And I was hoping that, well, with the Land Cruiser, I wasn't gonna have that problem. Well, with only 600 miles on it, it took a hit on the windshield and I got a pretty good little crack. Now, I did have a guy come out the next day and fill that because I didn't want that crack to run all the way across the windshield because, well, finding a windshield for one of these brand new Land Cruisers probably wouldn't be very easy. So far, it hasn't ran, but you can still see it just a little bit. I hope that this isn't a chronic thing like it is with the Jeeps. I'd like to not have to replace a bunch of windshields. All right, something else about the Land Cruiser that I think is just a product of newer vehicles having more safety features, and that is there's a lot of alarms on this thing, especially like the sensor alarms and the parking alarms. And you can go in and turn a lot of these off, but it's not as easy as it should be. You almost need to have the owner's manual open to figure out what each one of these little tiny abbreviations are that tells you what these are. It's just it's just modern day vehicles, I guess, and so we're just gonna have to get used to it. But I would like it if there was just a few little less alarms when I was off road. Now my next criticism is something I knew about long before I bought it, but it's ground clearance. I think it's the Achilles heel of the Land Cruiser because it does not have best in class ground clearance. Compared to a Jeep, compared to a Bronco and all the other four wheel drives out there that are meant to get out here and do some serious off roading, the Land Cruiser kind of falls short. Now, I'm gonna be lifting it and I'm gonna be putting bigger tires on there, but I'm already starting from a lower point than I'd like to. And I think, I think they could have done a better job with just a little more ground clearance on the Land Cruiser. Now, I've had it out here on some easy trails and it's done fine. I've gone over a couple little obstacles. We're gonna get it out and really put it through its paces here soon before we lift it, but I already know we're gonna be bumping and scratching and grinding. All right, now I said at the beginning of the video, we're gonna keep it real. And one of the things that I didn't think was gonna be a weakness of the Land Cruiser, in fact, I almost thought it was gonna be a strength, and that is the fuel economy. The Land Cruiser is a hybrid, and it's rated at 22 miles to the gallon in the city and 25 miles to the gallon in the highway. And well, I haven't seen anywhere close to those numbers. Even when I had the stock street tires that came on this thing, I was driving extremely conservative, trying to get the best fuel economy possible. I had it in eco mode, I was staying in the slow lane, and I barely just got 20 miles to the gallon on the freeway. Now, obviously I put on some bigger, more aggressive, heavier tires, and well, that's really wrecked habit on my fuel economy. So I've gotta rethink that a little bit on what weight tire I'm gonna be putting on here. But here's the problem. Fuel economy, you don't really, expect it to be great in an off-road vehicle. Although a hybrid, you kind of count on a little bit. But here's the challenge. The Land Cruiser only has a fuel tank that's just under 18 gallons. And so if I'm only getting 13, 14, 15 miles to the gallon on a smaller fuel tank, well, that decreases my range. And that's the one that I care about. I want to be able to go get deep into the backcountry and not worry about running out of fuel. So 
Maybe putting on some lighter tires will help a little bit, but I think I'm gonna have to figure out how to carry extra fuel or do some kind of uh, auxiliary tank. We'll figure that out in the future, but it's just something that I didn't think was gonna be an issue. Now, one of the reasons that I chose this model Land Cruiser specifically is because it came with a rear locker and a front sway bar disconnect. And so when you press that button, which is located in a really convenient spot, you get more flex out of the vehicle. The challenge is when you go over a certain speed, I think it's like 18 or 20 miles an hour, it reconnects that sway bar. And that's fine, uh, but then when you slow down, it doesn't automatically disconnect it like it does in the Jeep or other vehicles. And so you have to remember that, oh, if you're cruising around on the trail and you come up to an obstacle, oh, I've got to remember to hit that button again because it's not disengaged. It's a little inconvenient. I wish it would just remember that, hey, I'm off-road, I'm in off-road mode, I hit that sway bar disconnect. Yeah, there's going to be times when I'm going a little bit faster on the trail, but when I slow back down, it should disconnect just like it does in the Jeep. It's a little disappointing. Now, yes, I realize I'm being a little nitpicky about some of these things, but I think there's some refinements that could happen in the Land Cruiser. But all in all, I actually really love driving this vehicle and I love how well built it is. And I'm excited to see where we can take this thing. But we've got to do some upgrades. And I've already done a few that I've talked about, but I've done some recently that I think you guys are really going to find fascinating. And back here is the Camberx Kinetic Series Upper Control Arm. This thing is billet aluminum. It's super beefy. It's got an offset that allows for more wheel travel. It's got a huge ball joint on there, so we don't have to worry about that snapping off. Plus, it's easy to adjust the camber and the caster with this. Now, this is a pre-production one, and as things go further, we're gonna be adding more and more to the suspension. This is just the beginning. I think that is gonna be a really valuable asset to this vehicle because that's some good peace of mind, some good strength right there. Before we continue talking about the Land Cruiser today, guys, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video who is Onyx Off-Road. Onyx Off-Road is a comprehensive off-road overland navigation app that allows you to get deep back here in the back country and record and track and mark all the cool places you're going to. Now, normally in my vehicles, I will run a full-size iPad in here to run my off-road navigation. Onyx Off-Road runs great on an iPhone or on your iPad or any other device. But what's really great about the Land Cruiser is I have a nice large screen and it's got wireless Bluetooth that allows the app on Onyx Off-Road work with my Apple CarPlay system in the Toyota Land Cruiser and it just works really well. And it's easy to see, it's easy to record, it's easy to find my waypoints. And so I don't think that I'm actually going to install a full-size iPad in here. That may change down the road, but right now, I'm pretty happy with the way this is set up. If you are looking for a good off-road navigation app, check out Onyx Off-Road, and a thanks for their sponsorship. Now, in the last Land Cruiser update video, I talked about the Goose Gear system that we installed here, and this has given me such an incredible amount of storage, plus I have this huge sleeping platform in here. But now I've started to kind of pack it out and figure out where I want to put things, and so this is working out really well. Now, this is a sleeping platform that, you know, I'm 6'2", and I've got plenty of room here. And I came across this company called Born Outdoors, and they have this huge bedroll that's going to be perfect. I haven't used this yet, but I've played with it a little bit. I've laid it out. It comes in this really cool sea bag looking style, military looking bag, but inside it's got an air mattress. It's got a down blanket. It's got a pillow. It's going to be perfect for rolling out when I'm sleeping in here and then quickly putting it away. That's really nice. Then down here, I installed my Goal Zero Yeti 1500 system so I can power up the fridge. I don't have any kind of other power system in the vehicle right now. And I was looking into it. That Goal Zero, I am not sponsored by Goal Zero, by the way. And I know a lot of YouTube folks out there, you know, they are sponsored by all kinds of the battery manufacturers. I have never been. I bought that one four years ago and it is still running strong. I've beat the heck out of that thing. It has gone from vehicle to vehicle. It's been on numerous, numerous adventures and it just works each and every time I need it. So that's gonna stay in there because I kind of found a really good little spot for it. It's gonna stay in there for a while and uh, we'll figure out down the road 
if I even want to build a full battery management system in here, that actually might just work out perfectly. We'll see how it goes. But again, not sponsored by Goal Zero. That's just been a really good product. Now, the other thing I've been doing is just figuring out where I want to put stuff. And this is kind of my kitchen drawer right here and some lights and stuff. In fact, we have the Trail Recon little red lantern, the LED lantern. If you're interested in this, I will put a link down below. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but I've got a lot of my cooking gear in here. And so just trying to get organized with things. And then I've got tools and my recovery gear. And I'm pretty happy with how I had this organized, but I'll probably change it a hundred more times. Okay, there's one more thing up in here attached to the goose gear that I want to show you guys. Now this next upgrade we're going to talk about is one my son Jordan said is probably one of the coolest things that I've ever installed in one of my off-road vehicles. And while I don't think it's that cool, I'm pretty proud of how this turned out. Now, before we talk about this, just a couple things. One, one of the biggest questions I get asked over the years is, do I carry protection when I'm out here in the backcountry? And the answer to that is yes, I do carry to protect myself and my family, but I typically don't talk a lot about it here on the channel because sometimes YouTube can be a little funny about it and I know it could be a polarizing conversation. However, I know many of you carry firearms when you're out here in the backcountry, and I thought that there would be a lot of interest in the way I've set up a little storage in here. Now I have my California concealed carry weapons permit, which yes, you can get, believe it or not, it just takes a little time. It actually isn't that hard, which allows me to carry my firearm on my body or in my vehicle pretty much everywhere I go. But there's gonna be times when I need to secure my firearm and unload it. And so what I have done is I've installed this little safe, which you can barely see. And, and again, I wasn't sure I was gonna share this because I didn't want the whole world to know where my firearm is stored. However, it's typically not gonna be stored in here unless there's a specific situation. But I know a lot of people, they might really be interested in this. Now I ser searched long and hard for a bioprint safe that also allows you to access it with a key and a numeric code. And this just fit perfectly in that spot and it blends in so well with the goose gear you almost don't know it's there now i'm not going to show you how i have this bolted down but i can tell you that that safe is not going anywhere so uh you know i i hope that nobody tries to uh, do anything nefarious but uh i am happy to have this safe because when I need it, that's a great place to store it. Now I'll leave a link down below. I searched all kinds of safes uh, trying to find something that fit the bill and this one, this one just worked. And for those of you want to know, yes, that's my Glock 19 with a hole of sun red dot. That's my, uh, that's my personal protection carry right there. It's a pretty good firearm. All right, guys, if you would like to have a larger conversation about firearms, because I know a lot of you carry got going across state lines and where you can carry and all that kind of stuff. Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I think I think it's maybe a good time to have that conversation about off-roading and overlanding and carrying a firearm. Now the next upgrade on the Land Cruiser is not one you can really see, uh, but you can hear it, and that is a new MagnaFlow exhaust. MagnaFlow has been a supporter of the channel for many years, and I am thankful for their support. We've done some really cool projects over the years, and they've come out with a new exhaust system for the Land Cruiser. Now, the Land Cruiser in stock form doesn't sound very good. In fact, it kind of sounds like a little kid's go-kart. but throw a MagnaFlow exhaust on there and it's got a little more throaty sound to it. It sounds just like an off-road truck should. Plus, it's all stainless steel. It's high clearance, so it's tucked up away. And we've reduced some weight and we've gained a little bit of performance. Here, listen to this. Listen to how it sounds. sounds a lot better than it did stock, I promise you. I mean, it doesn't sound like a big old V8, uh, but it does sound like a nice little tough off-road truck. And driving down the freeway, it's nice and quiet, which I really like. Now, an upgrade that's almost a must on every off-road vehicle, so you have some added protection, is a good set of rock sliders. And while this Land Cruiser didn't come with any, I knew that was something I wanted to add pretty early on, because the last thing I want to do is do any damage to these rockers. So. I went over to the Toyota dealership and I picked up a set that are made specifically for this Land Cruiser. And I gotta tell you, 
these bolt right up. It took me less than 20 minutes to bolt these on. They bolt right onto the frame. They're steel, they're tucked up nice and tight. I think these are gonna hold up really well. I mean, I don't plan on doing a whole lot of rock bashing, but if I find myself rubbing up next to something, these are gonna do the job. Now, there are some aftermarket manufacturers that are starting to come out with some rock sliders that are gonna be a little bit different style, but honestly, I think for how I'm gonna use this Land Cruiser, these are gonna work perfect. So now while those are the upgrades that I've added recently, there is one that's no longer on here. And you'll notice that there's no longer a roof rack on top of the Land Cruiser. I had installed a roof rack right before going out to Colorado for Overland Expo. And I have roof racks on all of my vehicles. And let me preface this by saying, I realize that roof racks add more weight to your vehicle and they usually increase wind noise when you're driving down the road, but they give you a lot of capabilities of being able to mount stuff up there for storage, shovels, max tracks, off-road lights. They're a really valuable tool. But the roof rack that I had on here was, it was loud. It was louder than I anticipated. And the straw that kind of broke the camel's back is I took my wife for a drive and she's like, is that your roof rack? And I was like, yeah, she's like, wow, that's loud. And so I've removed it. And I will probably add another roof rack here in the future, but uh, sometimes there's a little trial and error. And so, um, yeah, right now there's no roof rack on there. All right, it's only fair that I talk about a few of the things that I really like about the Land Cruiser. And let's start with towing. Uh, I hooked up my Patriot Campers trailer, which weighs just over 3,000 pounds, fully loaded, and just kind of went and drove around for about an hour because I wanted to see how the Land Cruiser would tow. It did extremely well. The, the power with that hybrid system just it was flawless, up and down hills, no problems. But what I really liked is the built-in brake controller. That is perfect. That's just one less thing that I have to worry about installing. Now, I'm gonna be doing some off-road towing with this here in the future, but so far, I think it's gonna do really well. The other thing I like is just the off-road comfort. Driving this thing out here on some rough trails, that suspension, man, I mean, there's something to be said about an independent front suspension. Uh, it's not gonna be as strong or as capable as a Jeep, but out here on this trail, it was really nice. And on long drives, I drove this thing all the way out to Colorado and back, and let me tell you, it was plush. It was quiet, it was comfortable. I like how the dash is laid out. It just made for a very pleasant drive there and back. The last thing is I just love the styling of the Land Cruiser. It's boxy but yet it's a little bit modern. It just looks tough. Uh, I think they did a really good job, interior and exterior. So there's a lot that I really like about this Land Cruiser. All right, just coming under here under the rear door to uh, get a little shade. And that's, that's a nice feature uh, to be able to have kind of a little uh, pop-up awning uh, when I need it. Now, some things that are on top of mind right now that need to get done to this Land Cruiser. One, we need to lift it. And we gotta get this thing up in the air and give us some more ground clearance. So hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll be working on that and I will be sure to share that with you. And then we'll put on some little bigger tires. Again, it's all about getting, uh, getting up off the ground and uh, being able to tackle some good obstacles. The other thing is I've been keeping my eye on winch capable bumpers for the Land Cruiser. Some companies are starting to come out with them and I think that's one we're gonna install pretty soon. But I don't wanna rush into anything because with the Land Cruiser, you've typically got to do some cutting. And so that's not something that I wanna cut and decide later, oh, I wish I would've gone with a different one. So we're gonna wait just a little bit and see what some other manufacturers come out. And then of course, I need to get some off-road lights on this thing. So when I'm out on the trail and you know, things go a little slower and we end up getting at camp at night, I've got some good off-road lights. I had some on the roof rack, but I've had to pull those off until we, uh, until we come up with something else. So hopefully with a roof rack and a bumper, then we can work on some off-road lights. And at the end of the day, I'm looking forward to getting this thing out and really have some good adventures. Now that I've got my gear packed in here, I know how I'm gonna sleep in here. It's time to take this thing out and really put it through its paces. So here soon, guys. You're going to see this out on the trail. If you're not subscribed to Trail Recon, make sure you check us out and be sure to visit us over at trailrecon.com. Until next time, safe travels.